welcome once again to Fantasy Fiction Focus. Today our guest is uh, award-winning Canadian author Douglas Smith, author of um, fantasy, science fiction, uh, paranormal, um, horror as well, I believe. So welcome to Fantasy Fiction Focus, sir. Thank you, Simon. Thank you uh, for having me on your, uh, your show and your channel. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. So uh, this is really not all about me. It's about you. So what are you going to tell us? Are you going to tell us all about what you do and what you write about? Sure. Well, I, I guess I'll, I'll start that I'm, uh, I'm married. I've got two grown sons and a, uh, a most awesome granddaughter. Um, what uh, I live just north of Toronto. Um, I write fantasy, science fiction, some horror, really a mix of both. Um, I tend to, uh, to dabble in all, all those genres. Um, my career, I guess, started traditionally in short fiction. And uh, more recently, I've been working on, on novels and also a, uh, published a non-fiction book for, uh, for writers uh, on uh, how to market and sell short fiction. Oh, really? Uh, marketing, if you're marketing short fiction, not novels, then, eh? Yeah, um, that was, um, it, it grew out of a blog series that I did for Amazing Stories, um, and it was about, now 30, 35 weeks of uh, posts about basically the business side of short fiction is how I looked at it. Um, I didn't do uh, the creative side. I think there's a lot of sources for telling writers how to how to write better prose, uh, but there's virtually nothing on telling them how they should intelligently uh, try to pursue a career in short fiction. Uh, everything from how do you know it's ready uh, to send out um, how do you approach markets? How do you find the right markets? What's a strategy for for sending your fiction out? Um, how do you uh, how do you deal with rejections? How do you deal with uh, acceptances, which is also difficult because you're confronted with contracts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I wrote that series and then um, basically packaged it into uh, a how-to guide uh, that came out in the fall. So that's that's my most recent um, publication. Nice. I've had uh, sorry, uh, I've had three collections of short fiction. Um, one was a translated uh, work in in France, uh, but also two in English: uh, Chimera Scope and Impossibility. One um, urban fantasy novel, uh, The Wolf at the End of the World, and then I'm uh, I'm working on my uh, my second novel now. So when does this second novel going to come out? I mean, you're, how far into it are you at the moment? Uh, still the first draft. I'm uh, uh, on to the third act. Uh, it's my first uh, attempt at YA, YA at length. Anyway, I've done some short fiction in YA. So this is a young adult urban fantasy set in Toronto. Um, it's got some cool stuff in it. It's got um, dream walking and astral projection and rune magic and some cool villains and uh, a comic book ser superhero who really exists but only in your dreams and um, with the unusual uh, problem that he has uh, agoraphobia so he actually hasn't left his home in eight years. So it, it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun with it and uh, um, hope to finish up the first draft um, Probably mid spring. I'm hoping. Now I'm assuming that this is the, the, all these different areas that, you, that you're writing, and you've been interested in this stuff for quite some time. Yes. Um, sorry, I, I missed. What's there a question there? Sorry. Oh, you, you've been you've been looking. You've obviously been interested in these sort of areas for quite some time. Because that's obviously what you're what you're writing about. I mean, did you always plan to be a writer when you were, when you were younger? Um, I wrote a fair bit in high school, but I never kind of tried to get any of it published, and then I got away from it in, in university. I didn't come back to writing until um, uh, 1995, uh, and really what prompted it was one of my favorite authors was Roger Zelazny. Um, and I remember coming home from a summer vacation one time, and uh, the first piece of news I read was that he passed away. Um, far too early from cancer. I think he was 56. And I just remember thinking that I can't count on X number of years ahead of me to, uh, to chase the writing dream. So I decided to start right then. Um, 
wrote about six stories um, over the next year. I sent my first one out. I, it was January of 96, uh, and I remember getting my first rejection from uh, Don Hutchison, who edits, uh, or at that point edited, uh, uh, the Northern Freights anthologies. And in Don's manner, it was very polite, very Canadian, very nice, uh, uh, gentle rejection, which is a good way to start. Um, and I, I kept sending them out, and New Year's Eve, December 31st, that same year, I got my first acceptance, and um, that that was it. So it's, I, I'd stayed at short fiction for a long time, I found I was, I was writing more and more along. Um, I always had trouble keeping short stories short, and I just found that everything I was writing was getting up to 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 words. So I figured that uh, I was telling myself it was time to, uh, to try something longer. So for those people, I suppose, viewing this who don't know what short fiction is, is, that, is there a set length for that or a recommended length? Obviously not strictly, but what, what, what would short fiction for adults normally be uh, in terms of length? In speculative fiction, it's it's um, it's classified as a short story, as anything up to seventy five hundred words. Um, a novelette it is, uh, I think it's up to seventeen thousand five hundred words, and then a novella is up to forty thousand words. And novels technically are above forty thousand, but you're not going to sell um, a novel of that length to any uh, any traditional publisher. Most novels that uh, the trad houses, traditional houses would put out would be 80,000 plus at the minimum. Um, and, and for short fiction, back when I started, it was the traditional, uh, it was the recommended route for writers to start to break in. Um, I also deal that with that in, in my, um, my writer's guide on the short fiction. There are a lot of benefits, I think, that still apply. You, um, you can you can build, you can learn your craft, you can build your writer's toolbox um, a lot better when you're um, uh, when you're trying it in short stories than to try it in a single novel. So over the course of 25,000 word stories, you can try a lot of different techniques and uh, build a lot of different tools. I mean, you can try first person point of view, you can try third person, you can try, try present tense, etc. You can try unsympathetic um, uh, protag protagonists, etc., unreliable narrators. You can try more easily uh, than you could in a single novel. So I, I think it's a great way to learn your craft. Uh, it's got other benefits. You, you get feedback faster uh, on your short fiction. Uh, by, by sending them out and you find very quickly whether you know how close you are to being publishable uh, in a professional market. Um, you can build a network, you can build your resume, um, you can perhaps win some awards with your short fiction so it, it can raise your profile so that when you do go out with longer works uh, you actually have, um, you've got some credentials and uh, uh, you've, you've really kind of learned the craft and started to learn the industry. It's only a part of the, the publishing industry, but it is uh, it does give you exposure to a lot of things like um, contract terms and understanding rights and licensing of those rights, etc. And you can no, also no, earn a bit of money. It's not a lot. Yeah, very good advice by the sound thing. This book sounds like a very interesting tool for, for quite a lot of people starting out. Now, you mentioned rights and things, X. I know that... Um, some of those things are the most important thing in, in the contracts where you've got the the, 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 the subsidiary rights and everything so are quite important to, to watch out for. Because I think uh, it mentioned on your website you've been translated into into quite a few different languages. Yeah, I that began fairly early. I, I happened to stumble across um, a German anthology. I think it was through the Locus magazine, and they were soliciting uh, submissions in English and they were going to translate them, and they had one science fiction anthology, they had a fantasy anthology, so I, I was just starting out, I'd never realized that you could even do that, so um, I submitted to them, and then I started looking for whether other such markets existed, and it, it just started me submitting to some of these foreign language markets and getting published, which is cool. Um, I think I'm up to 31 countries and 25 languages that I've been published in, um, and you, you develop other contacts around the world, too. Um, I'd sold a number of my shapeshifter, my Hiroka stories, 
um, which is what my first novel is based on as well, to a French magazine, um, Tenebres, uh, Darkness. And um, as a result of that, I was able to use the French translation of one of those stories to submit to the Quebecois magazine, uh, Solaris, uh, who doesn't take subs in English. They only take French, uh, French translated submissions. So. I was actually able, I was able to submit to Solaris because of the uh, French translation in France. And that story went on to win uh, a French uh, Aurora, but it was actually my first award. So um, it was kind of cool, and it all came about from submitting to a, a, a magazine not in my language and not in my country. So I, I maintain... Sorry, I maintain a foreign market list on my website that if, if there are people who are watching this and you're a, you are a short fiction writer and you're wondering how can I find out where these uh, what markets uh, might exist, go to my website, uh, smithwriter.com, and just look for foreign market list. And um, you have all the information there uh, to pick a, pick a market. A lot of them pay. It's kind of cool. And uh, uh, it's a great way to kind of expand uh, your audience and your exposure around the world. So, and this was something that you you pursued yourself, I, I guess, because I know that sometimes people have, uh, obviously some people have agents, literary agents, but they're also uh, uh, agents that specifically look after foreign rights for people, but you, you, did, you did this yourself, I guess. Yeah, um, most of the agents, when they're dealing with foreign rights, or, or your publisher, if you sold them foreign rights, that tends to be for long form, so it tends to be for, uh, for novels. Um, short fiction... Um, if you're an established writer, a novelist, and you actually you also sell short fiction, you may have your agent who's doing that for you. Um, but it's sort of you know they'll do it as well as opposed to that's the, the main area of business. Um, no, this is something you can easily do yourself. All you have to do is find the market. Uh, you can check the market list for how they want submissions. Uh, they will. Uh, I only list ones that submit uh, or take submissions in English, so it's pretty easy. You just Find an email address, find the editor's name, um, modify your cover letter to uh, to identify where the story's already been published in English, and send it off. So it's all something you can do yourself. Absolutely. So are you are you now going to stick with the uh, with, with novel length fiction in future, or, or are you going to write another how-to book for writers, or are you going to go back to short stories? What are the, what are your plans? Um. My plans are this: the one I mentioned, the young adult one, is the uh, the first in, a, in what I think is a trilogy. Um, I've got sequels to The Wolf at the End of the World, my my shapeshifter um, uh, native Indian mythology based novel, um, and I've got a science fiction story based on one of my sh uh, short stories, Memories of the Dead Man, that I want to do. So, add it all up, I've got about five, six novels that I'd, I'd like to work on. Uh, the ideal scenario is I'll write short stories between them. Um, I've found that doesn't work. Um, quite frankly, short stories are much harder to write word for word uh, than the novels are. Um, a 10,000 word short story is a lot harder than writing uh, 10,000 words in a novel. Um, just everything has to work and, and you have to, it, it's just harder. So um, I, I just find it, it seems to be a different, uh, a different gear. Um, so I'm probably um, going to continue in novels for a while. If I, if I decide I want to take a break, I would go back to short fiction. But um, I think my focus right now uh, for the next couple of years is going to be on novels. Now, are you, going to, are you going to carry on writing in all these different genres? Are you going to focus on maybe just on paranormal or just on fantasy? Or are you going to keep doing whatever you feel like doing? Whatever I feel like doing, and, and the stories, the novels I listed, I guess um, most of those are, I would classify as urban fantasy. Um, the uh, the one science fiction one, so, you know, if, if the science fiction idea comes to me and I feel like writing that one next, I'll write that one next. It, it may uh, change um, if, so I, I went traditional for the short fiction career, I went traditional publishing houses, small presses, but still the traditional route for my uh, three collections. Uh, and then when it came to the, um, the writer's guide and the first novel, um, I took the indie route for that. For the next one, when I finished this current YA, 
Um, I'll probably still start by looking at the traditional publishing houses. Um, and then, who knows? I mean, if, if I have no success there, I guess I'd indie publish. Even if I get interest there, um, there is a concern about the, the, not, uh, the contracts that are coming out of the traditional houses right now in terms of the... Uh, they're fairly uh, one-sided. Um, advances are lower, the royalties are poorer, especially on ebooks, than you can get yourself. Um, the range of rights uh, that they're, they're asking for is, uh, has expanded. Uh, the reversion clauses for those rights has gotten much more strict. In other words, you basically never get the rights back. And also there's um, uh, what used to be sort of a standard non-compete or write a first refusal on your next book or something else that you write has become extremely egregious so that you are, you are very restricted um, in terms of what you can write next. Uh, down to the, the worst cases where you can't even do a blog post without getting your uh, your publisher's approval. So um, my, my ideal desire probably would be to get an offer from a traditional house with a contract that I'd be willing to sign. Um, I'm pretty confident on the first part. I'm less confident on the second part. Yeah, I think I think these days, uh, uh, I've, I've spoken to quite a few people like this year already, mostly for children's and YA stuff, but uh, a lot of people, I think, get quite frustrated quite early on that they can't get published and immediately uh, go to the self-publishing route. And, and I, I, I really recommend people to, you know, you, they, you should certainly try at first to try and get the traditional publisher interested because it's a lot less work for you. And then maybe go the indie route, but certainly don't abandon it before you've even tried it, I think. Yeah. So, so you, um, yeah. you, oh, say, go ahead. No, I, I agree, and I, and I think um, it's frustrating when you, um, a lot of the conversations of, with writers these days tend to be very black and white. They're either, you know, turn up their nose at the indie world and say, no, the traditional is the only way to go, or vice versa, that, you know, the traditional houses are, are um, screwing over the writers and you've got to do it yourself, why don't you? Um, I, I think the, the most intelligent route for a writer to take if you're at the book length stage of your career um, is is project by project. It, it should be a hybrid solution. Um, for nonfiction, I never really planned to uh, to even investigate the traditional houses. I know a lot of nonfiction writer friends and they simply say I will never go traditional again for any nonfiction book. You can make more money doing it yourself. Um, for, for a novel, I think, again, what I said, I think I'd, I'd explore a traditional house. See if you get an offer, see if you're comfortable with the contract, make sure you get help, and I don't mean you need an agent, I think you should go to an intellectual property lawyer, someone with contract and negotiation experience, um, and get their feedback, and if you need to negotiate, negotiate through a third party like that. Uh, but don't, don't just say, you know, there's only one route. Because I think uh, I think it depends on the project. The industry is changing so quickly. Um, good advice a year ago may be ridiculous advice this year, and vice versa. You know, for a year from now. Um, but don't don't rule out any options. Is what I tell a, a writer coming to to this stage. Yeah, and I think as well. That the, the, what I find an awful lot, a lot is, and I'm sure you do as well. If somebody's uh, thinking, oh, they're going to publish it themselves, they skip a very important stage, which is called editing, uh, with a professional <laughs> editor. And, uh, you mentioned that you did the, um, uh, you had, you collected some blog posts and put them into a, into a book form. Uh, I did the same sort of thing with tips for, for, for kids writers and everything. And I, I, this, is, this stuff had been on my blog. It had been out there before. And I thought, well, this looks pretty good. And I sent it to an editor, of course, to check over. And I'm very pleased that I did. Uh, because the last thing you need is, uh, I'm an expert and I'm going to show you how to publish a book and it's full of errors. So I was really pleased that I got it done. Uh, and, and, and I will do the same as you in the future. With, with guides for writers, I would never send those to a publisher. I'll, I'll do them. I'll do a couple more, I think, when I get time. But they will not. They'll be self published through Create Space and Amazon. So, yeah. Do you still do. Yeah, I agree. You still do blogs, by the way? Sorry, 
you still blog for for uh, uh, writers? I I have a blog on my website, but mainly it's there for uh, information on my writing career for people who follow that. Uh, so mostly it's about, you know, I have this new story coming out, or I'm up for an award, or I, I'm attending a convention in Toronto if you're in town, or I've got a reading series going on, something like that. Um, I will occasionally on that on that blog um, post uh, comments and links to articles on topics that I, I am interested in. A lot of them related to my first novel, which deals with... Um, uh, issues around environmental destruction, habitat destruction for animals, uh, First Nation issues, and, and the horrific history that we have in this uh, country for how we've dealt with our First Nations people. Um, but mostly, I'm, I'm, uh, I use the blog for uh, Here's My Writing Life. Uh, I'll probably, I'd like to write another series for Amazing Stories and probably on the creative side of, of writing. Um, I didn't start with that because, quite frankly, it's harder to write. I think it's very hard to teach uh, a creative craft. Um, it's easier to teach the business side, and that's why I started with that. Just, just follow on from your comment about editing, I'd, I'd say um, back to the traditional versus indie world. The indie world has the advantage that you have all the control and freedom. Um, the disadvantage is you have all the control the responsibility for doing all the work that a publisher would do for you. And I'd say if, if someone is thinking about indie publishing anything, uh, you mentioned editing, absolutely. And if it's, um, I'd say there's at least two levels of editing you should get. Uh, one is what I'd call substantive or content edit. Uh, I mean, does this book just hang together at, at a high level? If it's fiction, you know, are, are the characters believable? Are there huge plot holes? Um, uh, how's the pacing, uh, believability, whatever. Um, and then nonfiction is just is this the most logical layout. Are you sure you want to include this topic? Aren't there some topics you've missed, etc.? And then after you've done that and made all those fixes, you need the copy editing, the line editing, um, down to the, you know, the actual prose and making sure you don't have any stupid typos, awkward sentence structures. Um, you don't have any, we all have writing um, ticks, I'd call them that. You know, we tend to go to a certain sentence structure or paragraph structure or, or, or um, prose style too often, and, and, a, and a third set of eyes or second set of eyes can, can certainly catch that. And the other thing is you've got to go to a, a, an actual um, professional cover designer artist, uh, and those can be two things. There are some good artists who also do good cover design. You might have to find a, you know, a good art artist uh, and then get someone who's uh, experienced in doing actual cover design because um, cover design is, is another art. And I guarantee you, uh, you don't have it. You know, whatever writer is watching this, you're, I doubt very much that you're a wonderful prose writer and you can also be a, a perfect uh, creative design artist as well. Um, no, that's it. I think nothing that's shows right. up uh, as being unprofessional in a bad, bad cover. That's right. I mean, I, 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 I make sure that, that, that my own stuff's edited as much as possible before it goes anywhere near a publisher, but I know it's going to get changed, and I know I've made mistakes, but I think a lot of people, since the, the self-publishing thing began to become really big, I think it's probably calmed down a little now. It was a case of, I'm going to write a book, and my, all my friends and family think it's great, and it hangs down, they love the story, and I'll and I'll also send it to my friend who works as a school teacher to do the editing. Then I'll design my own cover from stock photographs, and off you go, press submit. And uh, it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Yeah. But, yeah. but, but that, yeah, but, but it sounds like you've got an awful lot on the go. It sounds like you're a bit like me. You've got an awful lot of things. Uh, plans are one thing. I mean, I don't. Know. I suppose you can plan a year ahead. Maybe that's about it if you're lucky. But what? There's there's lots of ideas I've had that I never thought I'd write, and they've become novels. And some that I thought I would, you know, complete, and they're just not going anywhere. They're on the back burner. But like you said, how many years do you have? You've got to get on with. It. Yeah. No. Exactly. And um, the one thing it it's hard because I have a day job too still, and and. Uh, uh, you know, finding the time to put new words on paper is always the biggest challenge, I think. Well, you seem to be doing a quite a decent job so far, uh, and, and obviously people in other countries are quite happy with you as well. So uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us today. 
and, uh, and, uh, and and now so many more people will know all about you. And also, you've got some good advice for people too, as well. I think on it, so I think that'll work out quite well. So, thank you, sir, for being with us today, and we wish you all the best in the future. Uh, Simon, thank you again very much for for having me on. Take care.